Inside, the Gulls' latest moves to strengthen the team for a run at the playoffs. Meet the new Gull, center Kyle Criscolo. When I found out where I was coming and uh, the organization I was traded to, I was obviously very excited. And get to know the American Hockey League's February Rookie of the Month. I don't remember who came and said, um, we just draft your, your buddy. So I, I was like, I was doing interviews, I stopped everything and I just wait for Mo and it was unbelievable. That and plenty more on the latest edition of Gulls All Access. For Karen Graff, we're out. joining us, I'm Emily Harlan. And I'm Andy Zilch. Since we last joined you, the Gulls have a retooled roster. The Anaheim Ducks made seven transactions leading up to the trade deadline. Those deals greatly impacted the San Diego Gulls roster. We'll introduce you to the new Gulls in a few minutes. But first, General Manager Bob Ferguson explains how the trade deadline moves are expected to improve the club. How did you and Bob Murray foresee this team coming to fruition and what were the first things that you wanted to generate to create a team? Well, it goes back to like a year ago. Last year in our organization was kind of the year our whole organization had been waiting for when we knew this really good group of young players, uh, the Troy Terrys, the Sam Steeles, uh, Josh Mahuras would all be coming to us at the same time. And it obviously paid off. I know a lot of them had a big contribution in Anaheim last season. Uh, but with us, and they came back at the end of the year, they were such a key part. But we also knew going into this year that they weren't going to be around. They were going to get their opportunity in Anaheim. So we had, we had a, lot of, uh, a lot of holes to fill when you put the team together. So uh, I think that the plan going into the season was to put together a team that was, uh, had had success in this league before, um, had, had been on winning teams in this league before, and then we could fill in the holes with some of the young players that we knew that were on contract or that were coming back, that were still on their entry level. And, and uh, that, that was kind of the game plan going in. Uh, based on training camp, a few, we, there was a few surprises that ended up staying up top and a few surprises that uh, ended up coming down here to start the year. So uh, it was a little bit of an adjustment period at the start of the year, but uh, here we are in the second half and things are starting to, to, to plan out and go as, as we originally planned way back in September. Leading up to the deadline, what were the conversations like between you and Bob Murray and, and how it affected he us here in San Diego? So much of it, what happens at our level, and we have to understand why we're, we're here to develop players. The goal of any organization is to win a Stanley Cup, and, and that's what our plan, plan is down here. We've got to make sure our players are, are ready to go up, not only to play in the NHL, but to win in the NHL. And with some injuries and some things up top this year that have happened and, and a couple of trades they made prior to the deadline is, is given players that were, were originally supposed to be with us or play most of the year with us a, a good opportunity up there. And with that being said, how important is the core that we have here and the guys that have carried over from years past that continue to preach the winning process and how to win for some of those younger guys? Well, I think it's very important. Uh, in, in this level, uh, you're... You're only allowed to have the, the five veterans uh, in your lineup on a given night, but those, they've got to be five key veterans. Uh, and you, wh where we're located in like San Diego, who, who wouldn't want to play here? And you've got to be really careful when you uh, look at identifying who your veterans are going to be, that you don't uh, bring in veterans that are looking to maybe get their, uh, their handicap down a little bit or work on their surfing skills or, or, or their suntan. You've got to make sure you've got veterans that are good leaders, good citizens, good people off the ice, uh, the ones that the younger players can learn how to be a pro from. And I think we've got a good, uh, you know, we use Sam Carrick since he's our captain, he's been with us uh, for, th for a few years now. He understands the culture, he understands what his role is, uh, he understands what it takes to win on the ice and what you also have to do off the ice in order, order to be a winner and to be a good pro. And it's so important with, it, with, it, with uh, players like that, you know, with Sam Carrick, Yanni Hockenpah, another one. Uh, who's just really established himself as good, solid players in this league and good leaders for our younger players to look up to. How important is another playoff run for this group and more specifically the prospects? 
Well, I think it's important, and it, any playoff run's important. And it goes back to, again, I think what our philosophy is here. We're not trying to make players good enough to play in the NHL. We're trying to make them good enough to win in the NHL. And the best thing that breeds winning is playoff type hockey. But we're going to play a lot of tight, uh, tight games here down the stretch. And the one thing our players have to understand is that uh, good defense creates offense, and and uh, the players are buying into that, and it's it's starting to prove itself. All right, thank you, Bob. So now you know why the organization has acquired the players they have and added them to the Gulls roster. We caught up with one of the new guys, Kyle Criscolo, following a recent practice. What was your reaction to the trade and how did you first hear about it? I'm sure with social media, was that how you found out? Yeah, actually, uh, I was out grabbing lunch and um, my dad called me and said, hey, uh, have you heard any news? And I said, no, I was, wasn't sure what he was talking about. He said, I think I just heard your name on NHL Network. <laughs> and uh, my agent called right away while I was on the phone with my dad. And uh, I found out uh, pretty quickly then and, um, you know, when I, when I found out where I was coming and uh, the organization I was traded to, I was obviously very excited. Uh, never spent much time out west, um, but uh, it's, I've heard great things and I'm really excited to be here with the team. You join the team right before a road trip and you go on a, a four or five day road trip and you come here for a day off. What was the first thing you did in San Diego on your day off? <laughs> um, it's a good question. Uh, so we got in late that night, it was seven o'clock just went to the hotel and kind of uh, shut it down. It was actually, you know, obviously a whirlwind of a couple of days. But uh, the next day I just, um, I went down to Pacific Beach. I heard some of the guys live that area and just went to the beach and, and sort of just walked around a little bit. It was actually a little cloudy. So uh, uh, the guys were, were saying I brought the bad weather, but um, you know, just getting to the beach and feeling that easy way of living. Uh, it was definitely a nice relief after a whirlwind couple of days. So being a Jersey guy and playing in the cities that you've played in, how crazy is it to say that sentence that you were on the beach in February? <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, I love it. <laughs> um, I mean, I love spending time on the beach, as is my wife. So we're, uh, we're super excited to get here and, and uh, enjoy the weather. Um, it's, been, it's been a mild winter out east, but it's obviously nothing like uh, 70 and sunny like it is here. What has been the, the greatest accomplishment in your career? Like you've been in professional hockey for several years, but is it something that's happened in that span or was it even before then? Um, I'd say the most memorable for me right now is, is the Calder Cup. Uh, I won the Calder Cup my rookie year. And um, you know, going into the season, I didn't know what to expect in college. We're playing 40 games a year and you know, I played 76 games and then another 19 playoff games. And uh, you realize how, um, how much of a mental grind it really is and uh, the team we had was really special and uh, I, I look fondly on those memories and and try to bring things from that team to every team that I go to um, so it's something we want here and the guys you know are obviously committed to that goal so uh, I'm excited to be on a team that's that's in the mix and, and hopefully uh, can have a long playoff run. What do you know about the organization do you go online do you google about the Ducks like how do you go about that process? Um, I'd spoken to the Ducks uh, quite some time ago when I was still in school and uh, back then I sort of did a little bit of research then and um, I mean word of mouth you hear a lot about the teams out here just uh, from guys around the league that have been here and obviously San Diego is, uh, is one of the places you, you would tell each other you want to play if you had the choice uh, obviously in terms of uh, living and um, so when I found out I, I did look at the roster I knew Kevin Boyle and Stolarz and uh, Ghouls, who had been traded here the year before, same situation, who I had spoken to quite a bit. So got my information from the guys, and uh, like I said, uh, when, when you find out you're coming to Anaheim, San Diego, it's uh, definitely a pleasant surprise. So you're kind of right in the middle of a, a seven-game road trip, the longest that we've had as a team. We're not going to be able to see you on home ice for a while, so can you describe what type of player you are for fans that haven't seen you live? Yeah, um, I'm a speedy two-way uh, forward. Um, I like to get to the gritty areas, but uh, obviously I'm not the biggest guy, so I use my quickness and, and speed to create uh, chances offensively. And, and um, you know, I pride myself on, on winning winning battles. And um, you know, I was taking a lot of face-offs in Lehigh, so it's something I could bring here as well and, and do the little things and just compete every single night. Coming up, February's AHL Rookie of the Month. Line. Weidman snaps it on, rebound, Colton scores! 1-0 and the goal streak continues to five straight games.
Max Comtois shares his story as Goals All Access continues. Welcome back. Here's a look at one of the most unique mini bobbleheads you'll ever see. Goals fans can add one to their collection March 21st when Stockton comes to town and the team hosts Marvel Superhero Night presented by San Diego's Honda dealers. Face off at Pachanga Arena San Diego will be at 7 p.m. Well, the Gulls were good neighbors recently when the San Diego Seals indoor lacrosse team had to relocate a game that was scheduled to be played on a runway at the Marine Corps Air Station Miramar. What that meant was some quick work to take up the Seals turf in order to get the ice ready for play that evening. The ice was ready on time for face-off as the Gulls hosted Country Night. The night kicked off with a country-themed tailgate that featured a live band, food trucks, a mechanical bull, and of course, some good old-fashioned line dancing. Following the tailgate, fans made their way to the gates where everyone in attendance received a Gulls cowboy hat. On the ice, the Gulls and San Jose battled in a barn burner with the Gulls coming out on top 6-30. Right to snaps it off. Rebound. Oh, one nothing, and the goal streak continues to five straight games. Right side to Lundestrom. Scores! Listen to America's finest fans as Lundestrom able to prod goal number five. Rolls away from him. Carrick shoots and scores. 4.7 left. Five to the score. Uh, it's the first time that we're in a playoff spot, so we were really excited about that before the game. And, uh, you know, we we come here, we come to the rink, we know we have opportunity to put up some point, and uh, we just do the job. And the barn was rocking tonight. How much fun is it to play in front of America's Finest fans? Typical Pachanga fan. Thanks, guys. Congratulations are in order for Max Comtois, who was named the CCM AHL Rookie of the Month for the month of February. He earned the honor by tying for the league lead in goals with eight. Most important, four of those were game winners. Comtois scored a goal in five consecutive games, registering a goals rookie record. Let's take a closer look at the 21-year-old left winger. Joachim Ryan got two of Henrik Springs. Max Comtois with a shot and a goal. The first game in the National Hockey League and the first goal for Max Comtois. Anaheim off and running. Third of the line, plays it to Broadhurst to Comtois. Scores! 3-1. Set to the line, Weidman snaps it on, rebound. Comtois scores! 1-0 and the goal streak continues to five straight games. When did you kind of realize that you were making progress to actually make a career out of playing hockey as a professional? Uh, I think it didn't start earlier um, than midget AAA. Um, that's probably the click in my head that maybe I was gonna, you know, make a career out of this. Um, I wasn't really, uh, you know, my work ethic wasn't really good when I was younger. It was p part of uh, part of the problem. Um, but then when I came to midget AAA, I just I just turn uh, into a, a work ethic guy, and uh, yeah, I think that's the, the starting point of I knew I was going to maybe make a career out of this. After two seasons in Victoriaville, you were drafted by the Ducks. What was the feeling like, and, and what do you remember about waking up and then being there for draft day and then receiving the jersey of Anaheim? It was awesome. Uh, obviously, I was a little bit disappointed not to go in the first round. I sat the whole first round in the stand. Uh, it was a little step back, but uh, when I, when I heard my name the next day, uh, it was unbelievable. And, you know, being with Mo also, that we shared the, the same draft. Uh, we shared that, that day together and a lot of great memories for, with our, our families is, is unbelievable. And I'm happy I, you know, I'm here and uh, I got a chance to, to play here. I'm excited. 
but I'm more excited that my best friend just just called by Anaheim. Uh, it's awesome. We're gonna have the chance to to be together again. When I heard that Anaheim was on the clock, and I just heard a lot of people screaming, and I was like, ah, oh, maybe that that's Mo. And then one. I don't remember who came and said, um, we just drive your, your buddy. So I, I was like, I was doing interviews. I stopped everything and I just wait for Mo and it was unbelievable to wait for him and to saw him in that jersey too. So it was a great day for us and a great day for our family. So I'm here with uh, Ducks draft uh, Maxime Contois. Max, uh, how does it feel to get drafted by uh, the Anaheim Ducks? I don't know, you tell me. You're the same team. Uh, it's awesome. Just uh, it's, it's a team that that I look up to with Getz, Laffin, Perry, and Kessler. Uh, those guys are a really good hockey player. I'm so excited to, to get things started and uh, so excited to be with you too. So we kind of fast forward to coming back to San Diego for the postseason run and here in Bakersfield. I'm sure that you weren't ready for a quadruple overtime game, but <laughs> you had it. You scored the game winner. What are some memories from that day and then that game? And I'm sure your legs were, were ready to fall off you, right? Yeah, uh, it, was, it wasn't It was easy, uh, especially I, di I didn't know I was going to play uh, the day before. Um, Dallas told me, uh, I think it was a Thursday practice, so it was, uh, I, didn't, I didn't know, but uh, you know, it, was a, it was a weird game. It was the longest game I've ever played in my life, and uh, you know, we, we just found a way to, to win, and you know, I, just, I had a, a great play by... Uh, by Kev to, to give me a puck, give me a chance to, to put it in, and I just I just did it, and we won, and it was it was it was a great feeling. Hander turned away, another chance. Kopitar scores his second of the night. Four nothing, San Diego, his seventh of the season. So you were named Rookie of the Month. What has been a recipe for success for you over this past month compared to the beginning part of the season? Uh, I think just having fun, uh, you know, it, obviously it was being, I was being really hard on myself to, to start the season and I don't think I played my, my game the, the, the best I can and, uh, you know, and when I, I think it changed in Iowa, I just uh, trying, to ch ch trying to change some stuff and uh, it worked and, you know, so right now we're, we're doing pretty good and obviously being with uh, Brody and, and DeLeo really, I think, really helped my game and uh, you know, we're just going out there having fun and I'm just trying to make a difference and it's working right now. Andy, as Comtois heated up, so did the goals. They were 9-2-2 two two in February. What have been the keys to the team's success? Well, I, I think it's been strong defensive work and that's something that the team has preached all season long is being a team that can work from their own zone upwards throughout the offensive zone. And, the team has been really strong. I mean, there was something that clicked in the month of February. I think it maybe was consecutive games, but also just that competition that was created amongst the teammates themselves. They challenged one another. The coaching staff challenged them, limit the shots, limit the scoring chances, and it certainly paved the way for a lot of good victories for this club. Earlier, we heard about the trade deadline acquisitions of Chris Colo and Pearson. What can we expect from each of them? Well, we'll talk about Chris Colo first. Uh, he's a good, strong defensive offenseman, which sometimes you might think, well, what does that even mean? That means that he's really good in his own zone. He's a responsible player who goes back down to his own goal line. He's going to help out the defense, make sure that that puck's getting out and it's out of harm's way. Same thing could be said for Pearson. Obviously, he's a defenseman, but he's actually got a little bit of an offensive side to him. He jumped in played on the second power play unit right away. Good puck mover as well. So as soon as the goals are looking northbound, he's the guy who's going to lead that charge for them. And what are the near-term hurdles the goals face as they battle for a playoff spot? Well, I think the fate is in their own hands. This team's not playing outside the division anymore. They're going to have three games against Colorado, two games against Tucson, and then another three games against Ontario. So you got your bread and butter right there. The teams that you're trying to chase are right in front of you. The goals hold their own destiny, and it's going to be exciting from this way on forward. Thanks, Andy. Oh, nice Coming up, some youth hockey players in La Jolla yeah, had a chance to meet Andrew Polarowski and Kiefer Sherwood. What's up, buddy? You're welcome. That plus a look ahead as Gauls All nice. Access continues. You oh, you, you want to puck too? Gauls fans, things are pretty tight in the Pacific Division as the AHL playoff race comes down to the wire. 
so you don't want to miss our next telecast which pits the goals against Division Foe Ontario. If you don't want to make the drive up to Ontario, we'll bring the game to you. That's this Sunday at 3 o'clock right here on Fox 5 San Diego. Among the many transactions recently recalled to the Anaheim Ducks was Anthony Stolarz, Yanni Hockenpah, and Kiefer Sherwood. Before he went to Anaheim, Sherwood joined Andrew Poldorowski at the rink at University Town Center to meet some youth hockey players. There you go, bud. Nice to meet you. I'm Kiefer. There you go. How's practice? Good? There you go. Have fun. Oh, nice pink tape. You want a puck? What's up, buddy? You're welcome. How's it going? Nice. There you go. Oh, you, you want a puck too? I have your card. Yeah? Next you should have brought it. Bought You're going to bring it to me? I'll bring it, I'll bring it with the shark. Oh. <laughs> yeah. He told you that? <laughs> nice. That one kid said, uh, I see Hunter Drew all the time, and when I saw him, he said, He's the best looking guy on the team. <laughs> hey, Ava. There you go. Yep, have a good one. Make sure you always have fun. incredible how many kids were out there for practice, yet another sign of the strength of youth hockey in San Diego. And the goals will continue to do their part to support those programs. We're just about out of time for this episode of Gulls All Access, but you can join us right here on Fox 5 San Diego Thursday at 3.30 for the next episode. We'll have the latest from the team's seven game road trip and we'll keep you up to date on the race for the Calder Cup playoffs. Meantime, you can catch all the goals, scores, news, highlights, and photos at SanDiegoGoals.com or on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. That'll do it for this show. For Emily Harlan, I'm Andy Zilch. Thanks for watching Goals All Access.